Hello, this is a tutorial on creating visuals for your music inside Ableton Live. To create the visuals, I'm using a suite of Max for Live devices called Zwobot, and this video is a tutorial on a specific Zwobot device. If you're new to Zwobot, I'd recommend you go back and watch some of my earlier videos first, which you can find in my Zwobot in Ableton tutorials playlist. I'll put a link to that in the top right corner now. In this video, I'm going to be talking about the Data Mosh device, which basically messes up your video or image by glitching the pixels and it creates a kind of trippy, distorted look. The way this works in the case of Zobar is based on the brightness and the movement of the incoming visual. So if you've got a still image, it's not going to be as effective as if you've got a video because it's based on pixels moving around. So just bear that in mind, the way your visual is moving and the contrast and brightness of that is going to alter how the effect works. Okay, so I've already got my Zwobot player and monitor devices loaded in. If you want to learn more about how those work, I've done separate videos on them. So again, if you're new to Zwobot, go back and watch those first. Also, if you're interested in buying Zwobot, there's a link in the description which will take you to the page where you can buy the entire suite which comes with all of these devices you can see here. Okay, so the data mosh effect. So the first dial we've got is this data mosh dial and this essentially controls the intensity of the effect and how much the effect is going to be applied. So as I'm turning it up, you can see these little glitchy pixel errors appearing and you can see the image is getting a bit warped. If I turn it off, this is what it should look like and you can see it's being a bit warped and distorted. Now we're not seeing too much of a data mosh effect because this second dial, trail strength, is turned right down and that controls how much these pixels are going to turn into trails and move. So when that's right down, the effect is very subtle. So you have to have the trail strength up a bit. Now what I'm going to do, because this effect is most effective, noticeable, when you're switching between different videos and different images, I'm going to turn this effect on. And what this is going to do is jump between my two video decks. Okay, next we have got speed. This controls the speed of that trail. The lower down it is, the slower it's going to be. And the higher up it is, the faster it is. And we've got flow adjust. So this controls which direction, essentially, that trail goes in. So when you move it to the left, we can see it's moving more to the top left. Whereas if I move it over to the right, it's moving down to the bottom right. And we've got this auto button. If you click that, it will automatically adjust the flow. I'm not entirely sure what that's based on, but if you want it to be changing, you can just switch that auto button on. Then we've got waves. I think it's controlling the wave form that the trail stream is based upon. So it changes the direction of it in the same way that the flow adjust does, but it also changes the shape of it a bit. Quality controls the quality of the image, so the lower down it is, the more pixelated the effect is, whereas if you turn it up, it's smoother. So I think it controls the size of the pixels. Here, they're very large squares, so it makes the, the video look like it's much lower quality, and then as you bring it up, those pixels become smaller, and the overall effect becomes a bit smoother. And then we've got this FX Attractor button, which switches between white and black, and that controls which parts of the image the effect is going to be applied to. So now, even though it's showing B, I've actually selected white. So it's set to white, so all the lighter parts of the video are going to have this effect applied to them. Whereas if I change it now and I click that, that's now set to black. And you can see only these darker parts of the video have the effect applied to them. And then we've got brightness, which 
we'll change the brightness. Down in the bottom right hand corner we have got our usual transparency controls. So this controls the overall transparency of the effect. And then we've got a selection of blend modes. And we have this T button, this stands for texture. So what that does is you can apply the effect as a texture map. We also have some sound reactivity. Let's look at that. I'm going to unmute this track. This is a track by an artist called Odd School and Bit Basic. I'll put a link to this release in the description of the video. It's released on a record label called Machine Records. Let's start by putting some audio reactivity on this data mosh control. Maybe we'll have it get less with the lower frequencies. Or do we want to have more? Yeah, let's have it have more. I'll turn it down and then I'll have it go up. The trail stream, I will set maybe to respond to the higher frequencies. The speeds, let's have that respond to the lower frequencies as well. I'll put the flow adjust to auto. Waves, put that to lower. Quality I'm going to leave as is. And the brightness I'll leave down to zero. And what we can also do is use some of these beat controls. So I've already got my master beat control set to half a note. I'm going to turn it on on this FX attractor. So now it's going to switch between black and white every half note in accordance with the master BPM. And I'll also put it on the waves actually. So I'll turn the sound reactivity off on that and instead have a beat control on it. And maybe I'll do the same for the speed dial as well. So that's the data mosh effect. Now I'm just going to have a play about with it and use it with some other robot devices to see what kinds of effects we can get out of it. Let's start by switching all of these sound reactivity and beat controls off. And I'm going to use a texture map instead, I think. Turn the trail strength down a little bit. Maybe I'll turn the overall data mosh effect down a bit. So what other devices might I want to use here? Let's... Add some, let's put this scan device in here. And I'm going to put that, let's try putting it underneath the mosh effect. So let's just turn the mosh device off a second so I can concentrate on this. Okay, let's have these scan lines come in with the lower frequencies. Let's have the softness right down. I want this direction to change, but I can't do that from within the module, so I'll stick an LFO on it. Let's map that to here, but I want it to be... Actually, that's okay. I'll just make it slower. Every four notes. change it to square. 
maybe I only have two notes actually. Okay. Do I want color on it? Let's put the beat control on the color. Let's turn the mosh effect back on now. Okay, that's a bit much, I think. Maybe let's turn the texture map off. What about if I put it underneath the scan lines? And maybe I'll make the scan lines sensitivity a bit smaller, which means they're gonna be the lines gonna be bigger. Okay. Let's drop in this back on top actually. Yeah, and what about if we put a blend mode on the scan lines to make it a bit more subtle? Okay, let's go with that. But I maybe want some more videos other than just these two, so I'm gonna use my... Actually, I'm just gonna load a folder into this deck. Just drag in and drop in a folder full of videos here, and I'm gonna have it change to random file every 16 notes. And I'll speed the videos up. Let's just stop and start it again. What happens if I turn the data mosh effect up a bit more? And let's change it to black actually, or to white. Okay, well that's one thing I can do. I wouldn't want to add too much on top of this because it's a bit, it's, there's quite a lot going on and if I added more, I think it's just going to get a bit too crazy. What about if I add a blend mode to the mosh effect? Just thinking maybe make it a little bit more subtle. Okay, let's use the... Hmm. Or I'll change this. Yeah, let's have that. Probably turn the trail strength up a bit, maybe. Okay, so that's one kind of effect I could have. And what I'm going to do is group these devices and turn them into an audio effects rack. And that way I can just activate and disactivate them all in one go with one click so i can think of that as being like one effect and now let's grab another mosh device and create another variant so let's just minimize these and i'll turn them off let's just move those to the top and I'm going to connect this one down here. Switch that on. Let's see what else we can do. A different effect with a separate instance of the Mosh device. Maybe we'll keep the quality high. Just 
gonna play about and see if I stumble across something I like. Have some audio reactivity. I want the flow adjust to be changing. Let's think about another effect bring in, maybe the reflux. Let's put that... Mm, let's try it on top first and then see how it looks. Okay, let's put it below. visual generator modules yeah I'm gonna try using the mosh with the pattern maybe let's put it underneath and now that's gonna get rid of the videos because this is a visual effects generator so it creates its own visuals have some color okay and let's put some sound reactivity on some of these controls on the data marsh control now. Maybe I don't want any color on. Yeah, let's know. Let's put it back on.
And let's also try putting on the Kaleidoscope. have to multiply blend mode on that and actually because I don't want the kaleidoscope mode on this first effect that we created so I only want it on this which means I'm going to need to use the offset device so let's put that on top of there and I'll just put the kaleidoscope effect to that setting I won't have the blend mode on there. swap out this pattern one actually because I don't really like it with the data mosh effect let's try something a bit more subtle let's try the Petra device setting on intensity right up maybe maybe not the texture on turn the flow just off let's turn the waves down that look like if I turn the mosh off okay yeah that's cool oh, maybe I don't want yeah I quite like it without the offset although maybe I want a different setting on the offset module these I quite like these shift settings That I would like them to move, although there is a separate device that'll do that, so I'll get that. So let's delete this offset module, and I believe it is called Shift. Is this the one? Yeah. So let's put that on top of this. And actually, maybe I want the mosh on top of that as well. Let's have a look. Set it to two, and let's have a change with the lower frequencies, and let's have everything here changing with the lower frequencies. What about if I put a mosh underneath it I 
or if I put the shift right at the bottom and then I put texture on this. Try some of these other shapes, see if any of these look better. Skip the track forward a bit. Okay. And let's just see again what it looked like with that on top. Okay. Maybe that could be another setting. Let's just try some blend modes here. No, let's keep that off. What about a blend mode on the shift? Yeah, that's kind of interesting. Which blend modes do I want to use then? Lights or pin? Let's stick with pin. One thing I'm just gonna try, I'm just gonna save this. I want a bit more variety with the colors because with the Petra module, which is what's controlling all the colors at the moment, it tends to cycle through the col same color variations. So maybe I'll bring the pattern back in, but I'll put it at the bottom. And then I can set this Petra, instead of having it on color, set it to texture. And then that's going to mean that it's picking up these patterns. Yeah, all these different color patterns from here. But it might be a bit too much. Skip the track forward a bit again. Yeah, it looks a bit different. I think I preferred it before, but let's just try a few things out. Yeah, I preferred it before. Okay, put it back to colour.
Okay, well, let's just save that as one thing. I just want to check if I like it with the kaleidoscope on it as well. leave the kaleidoscope off on that one for now. So let's group these ones now. So I'm just going to minimize them all. And I'll group those. So now we have two separate effects that we can easily trigger with the click of a single button, which is quite nice. Oh, and they're both on now. So let's do the same again. Let's get another Mosh device, bring that in, and I'm going to just put that here for now, switch it on, and let's turn both of these right up, let's have the quality right up, let's have this effects attractor changing on beat, let's turn the waves down, let's have the flow adjust on auto. Okay, so what I want to do with this effect is have it going on top of different images. Instead of these videos, I want it on top of some images. So to do that, I'm going to insert a MIDI track and I'm going to use the Rack Quick Set. And I can drag some different visuals into here. So I'm going to drag a bunch of images into here. Okay, so there's different ways you could control these. You can have this controlled by a, a controller, an external controller. So if you've got a push, for example, you could manually trigger these. If you're working in arrangement view, you can put a clip in and program your notes in. Or if you're working from session view, you can use clips. I'm gonna do that, but now I'm gonna have this clip play in C2. I'm gonna have this one play in C sharp two. I'm gonna keep going until F sharp two because that's or sorry G sharp two. Because that's where the images go up to. D sharp two E F Sharp, G, and G sharp. So now, when I play these clips, you can see it's triggering those images. And I could control that with the controller if I was performing live, for example. Or I can put some follow actions. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to put a follow action and I'm going to say other and there we go. Let's just leave it at that. Okay, so now I can get back to playing about with my effects while those videos are automatically changing. Maybe I want this data mosh to be a bit higher. And I quite like the trail stream being right up. I don't want the texture mode on. Could make the speed a bit slower. We're still getting the videos in there because this is still set to this, but I quite like that. 
that we're getting a mixture of the two, but if I wanted to, I could turn this off. Brightness, no, leave that down. I think that's okay, but do we want to put some other effects on here? Let's go with maybe the earthquake one, and let's put that underneath the marsh effect, and I'm going to have this flicker device going with the lower, lower frequencies. Okay. Maybe we'll make this earthquake have a blend mode instead. Okay, I think I'm going to put this difference blend mode on on there. Maybe we'll also put try a feedback device on here, maybe. Let's just see what that looks like.
Okay, let's just keep these two then, and I can group them like we did with the others. So now we have three different effects, all using the Mosh module, but in very different ways. Anyway, that's some examples of how you can use the Data Mosh module with some of the other Zwobot devices. Like I said, if you want to buy Zwobot, click the link in the description. And if you liked this video, click the like button, add a comment, subscribe to the channel, and so on and so forth. And I'll be back with another Zwobot video soon.